what we've been inviting our departments to explore with us is can we use an animal that I guess we can all agree on has contributed to significant degradation in the Kimberley and is seen to be a problem can we by changing its behavior actually use this undesirable animal to be part of a solution I believe we can the end of 91, the area we're now standing in was an eroding wetland. The creek had eaten right through the wetland into the other slope. Gullies were expanding, the channel was expanding. We were shifting hundreds, if not thousands of tons of uh, silt and peat out every wet season. The country was bare. I was at a loss what, what we could do and the creek stopped flowing every year around about July or August. With trial and error, we tried a few things. It took us five years and we started, we now have, after five years, we got perennial creek flow. And what I need to say is this perennial creek flow here, the water here is because of the grass. And the grass is here because of the way we moved our animals. So once we started harnessing the animal energy we ended up with more mouths and more hooves here every year which is counterintuitive just like it's counterintuitive that the waters here is because of the grass right and i guess this is what really gives me hope if if, if i if we if we know what to do to change dry erosion gullies back into healthy creek beds that's a recipe we can replicate again and again all over Northern Australia. One of my main mentors is Alan Savory, who found out in Africa, firstly, and then we found out the supplies in other continents as well, and we've tested locally, and that is getting the large herbivores to, to be in the right place, at the right time, behaving in the right manner, to, keep, to mulch, evenly fertilize and prune vegetation. So, Actually, the role in savanna landscapes or seasonally dry landscapes, the role of the large herbivore is primarily to be the gardener and nurturer of the vegetation. Can we, by changing its behavior, actually use this undesirable animal to be part of a solution? I believe we can. And I didn't voice that opinion until I'd done a bit of work with the cattle which is more or less my pilot project. But cattle are also herd animals and they, and, and I realized, hang on, we haven't got anywhere near as enough mouths and hooves to mulch, fertilize and prune the vegetation for what grows here every year. And the cane grass does come back every year and so does the spinifex, provided we don't make too many mistakes. However, the donkeys, a wild donkey population, once it's been annihilated, won't come back. And we know that nature in other savanna systems uses multi-species. The observation is the bigger the herbivore, the more rubbish vegetation it can cycle. What are our options? Well, we have fire, we have mechanical options, chemical options, or biological options. I'm saying is, hang on, here's a biological option staring us in the face. Let's see what we can do with it. And even if it needs a ministerial injunction, to set a precedent and say, well, hang on, it is a declared species, but let's, let's just see what can be done before we deprive ourselves of the opportunity to find out what nature would allow us in this situation. So fire is a very useful tool. If we want bare ground, if we want fire breaks, we can't fight fire with fire. It's a very useful tool. We use it every year. We also use it for cooking and keeping our showers warm. But also we, we have areas where we don't want fire, where we actually want to build soils. And that's and where we want to get water coming back and we will go to area where we've shown where we with just adding more grass we end up with more water and the reason why we've got more grass is because of the way we influence the behavior of the large herbivores or all herbivores ultimately so this is where the unique opportunity is for northern australia even though we're sparsely populated we can get animals to do the job as long as we get the animals to do the right to behave in a way that the vegetation grows and the vegetation will then protect the soil. The soil will then allow more water, grow more grass and you end up with more and more water staying on site.
So we're looking at the tracks of our gardeners who have mulched, fertilized and pruned vegetation that can still capitalize off last year's rainfall. So what we're looking for in the landscape is signs of green. Green is telling us that we're harvesting some of the gratis energy we get on a daily basis and that we've managed to hang on to a little bit of water that dropped out of the sky. So actually if we look around here there's not much green which means we've got a long way to go to getting this country healthy again. And at the same time if I did get a fire it would be a lot easier to contain it in an area like this. What we're also wanting the animals to do is we're wanting them to feel comfortable with our presence so that they stay in the area as we increase the, the, the fodder reserves. We also want them to assist in creating fire breaks and fire mitigation strategies. So what we're actually doing is just on the other side, on the, just below the cliff, we are putting out salt licks. So the donkeys visit those areas anyway, but knowing that there's something special up there, it makes them inclined to go up there more frequently. And that that is, allows us in all this area where we can't feasibly manage with cattle. Looks like there's two there, she's got a foal there from last year next to her. Um, the areas that we can't manage effectively with the cattle, we can manage indirectly with the donkeys, get them to push down this fire hazard so that when it's wet we can actually burn above it and, don't, and, and, and create fire breaks and create low, low fuel zones without actually having to light fly, fires at the actual creek itself. So, so that way water that gets washed off the range with the inev inevitable fires that happen on the range, we don't have all the silt being washed into the stream and out to Wyndham. So when I talk about using nature's forces and using nature's principles, what we're aiming at in a, our latitudes is optimizing the sunshine that gets beamed in on every, every day. And the only way we can get sunshine into the economy, into biodiversity, into uh, our pockets if, if money is the objective, is via the photosynthetic process. And that means we need more green plants. To have more green plants, we need more water available throughout the year. So the, the, the way that nature builds these uh, subtropical economies is she has primary producers, that's plants, pull in the energy. We have animals that keep the plants healthy and the plants then feed the soils. Those up at the top who have to answer uh, to the regulations and make the regulations and have to answer to the public and say, yes, people are complying with regulations. So I see there is that dilemma. I also see there's a culture within our public service which the people in it are not responsible for, but it's a culture where if someone goes out on a limb and makes a mistake, they really get into trouble. If they go out on a limb and it works out fine, well, they may get a few taps on the shoulders, but really no one knows about it. So it's become, it's a very risky business to fight intuition or to fight the trend and try something that regulation now um, has deemed to be wrong. So I would thank very much the people at the operational level since the late 90s who helped me work on the ground and test some of these theories while we were hoping that people upline would enter the discussion. I believe I can interact and work with these little animals. They can, they can do whatever they do for survival for a donkey in the Kimberley is a part-time job because he's actually a semi-desert animal. But I don't want to see the Kimberley become a semi-desert or more of a desert than we're already seeing. So I'm saying is, well, let's use a semi-desert animal here at the cutting edge of this ecological pioneering that we're doing. So you can't expect these guys when they realize that to run my business, I've got to buy this truck and let the donkeys go, that they're going to shoot all the donkeys especially in a country like this where survival for a donkey is a part-time job. They're a semi-desert animal. And then we start blowing out all the donkeys and destocking all the cattle. Well, all that grass that every one of these animals, that arm full of grass that every one of these animals would have mowed and processed and put back into the soil or back onto the soil that the dung beetles then could put into the soil. Well, what do you do season two? Apart from praying that no one lights it up for you.